Hi guys, welcome back. Today also we will be discussing three important questions related to UPSC prelims. And thank you all for yesterday's responses. And our quiz question was, I have given you a quote that is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind and asked to identify whose words are this and to which event this quote is related with. So it's Neil Armstrong's words when he first landed on the surface of moon in 1969. So that is it. We will move to today's session. First question for the day with reference to Yongul Blue Hall recently seen in the news. Consider the following statement. Statement 1. Blue holes are marine caverns filled with limestone. And statement 2. YBH is located on Sisha Islands of Indian Ocean. And statement 3. It is unfavorable for most sea life. So which of the above statements is or not correct? Option A. 1 and 2 only. Option B. 2 and 3 only. Option C. 1 and 3 only. Option D. 1, 2 and 3. So the correct answer here is Option A. 1 and 2 only. Uh, only statement 3 is correct. Both first statement and second statements are wrong statements. First we will see what is a blue hole. Here you can see the picture of a blue hole. It is formed in the sea. The dark blue region you see in the picture is a blue hole and it is distinct from other parts of the sea. It is actually a marine cavern. Cavern means a cave. So it is a cave in the ocean and it is filled with water not limestone. Now let's see how a blue hole is formed. I hope you are aware about ice ages. The blue hole actually formed during the past ice ages. So which means the temperature of earth keeps on fluctuating. Sometimes warm ages comes in where greenhouse gases dominates and sometimes temperature of earth goes down. So that is called ice ages and the latest ice age was around 12,000 years ago. So when ice ages occurs, the water level in the ocean lowers. Why? Because glaciers are formed. So when water recedes in ice ages, what happens is the rock starts eroding and that is called dissolution of carbonate rocks. So then the holes are formed in that region and then when ice age is over and warm age starts, water level rises again and it fills these holes with water and that is how a blue hole is formed. This can usually be seen on, see water recedes from the corners of the ocean. So these blue holes are usually seen in the place where land and ocean meet. And its waters are mostly isolated from the surrounding ocean and it receives little fresh water from rainfall. And also another fact is that wherever you could see the blue hole, you can see limestone topography there. So its formation is very easy in limestone topography. And there you can see the picture of the depth of the blue hole, very steep cavern and the white colored structure you see in the picture beneath the sea is talisite and stalgamite. So that's a type of formation that hangs from the ceiling of the caves is talisite and the corresponding formation on the floor of the cave is known as talgamite. and both are pointy formation found in the limestone caves. And guys, there is a mnemonic to remember this. One is that stalacite has a C for ceiling and stalgamite has a G for ground. So remember in that way. And uh, it is anoxic which means dissolved oxygen level is nearly zero. Since the oxygen is absent, it's unfavorable for sea life. But this area is a critical environment, usually concentration of carbons are found in these caverns. So it helps to study carbon cycling related stuffs. That is the Yongle Blue Hole and it is 300 meter deep and it is known as deepest known marine cavern in the world. And Yongle Blue Hole is in Sisha Island which is located in South China Sea. And this was in news as carbon as old as 8000 years found in Yongle Blue Hole recently. And there is one another formation called Cenote. It is inland formation, cave-like hole in the land. 
like blue hole is to see and cenot is to land and there are few other blue hole like yongle exist in the world and one another famous blue hole is dean's blue hole so our quiz question for today is this only where is dean's blue hole located please post your answers in the comment section guys we will move to second question megadattu project often seen in the news is on which among the following river option a kaveri option b krishna option c godavari option d son so the correct answer here is option a kaveri so it is a multi purpose balancing reservoir project our megadattu in karnataka here you can see the map that is where the project being built and it will supply drinking water to bengaluru and ramnagar districts besides generating power and the issue here is karnataka has been contending that there is a need to augment capacity to store excess water in monsoon surplus years the recent heavy rain and floods resulted in karnataka releasing excess water from the kaveri to tamil nadu and this has led the state to intensify its efforts to build megadattu reservoir what karnataka saying is that the reservoir would help store excess water which can be released to tamil nadu during dry months besides taking care of drinking water requirements of cities and towns of karnataka and according to karnataka excess water is of no use even to tamil nadu as it would run off into the sea but tamil nadu and puducherry is opposing this project tamil nadu fears that karnataka's move to create more storage facilities would effectively prevent the flow in the kaveri which is a lifeline for agriculture in delta districts of tamil nadu and besides being a major drinking water source for several districts in tamil nadu so that controversy is going on and the last question for the day worldwide educating for future index 2019 recently seen in the news is released by which among the following option a unesco option b world economic forum option c pratham ngo and option d the economist intelligence unit so the answer here is option d the economist intelligence unit this report was published by the economist intelligence unit and it is developed to assess the effectiveness of education systems in preparing students for the demands of the work and life and finland topped the index followed by sweden india ranked 35th in this report improved its ranking to 5 spots and india's growth is attributed to the new national education policy introduced and published in 2019 it is the first comprehensive global index to evaluate inputs to the education systems rather than outputs so that is it that's all for today guys we will meet tomorrow with another set of questions please post your answers and scores thank you for watching